Good day. We're glad you could join us. We'd like to give you a little background on the ministry and work of Lutheran deacons in Southern California. Deacons have been around in the Lutheran Church for centuries, but they've been largely neglected in America in recent decades. So we'd like to give you a little background on what deacons are like and the kind of ministry they perform here in Southern California. To do that, two deacons who have been in office for quite some time will be able to share their ministries with us. Deacon Paul Schmidt serving at First Lutheran Church in Fontana, California. Blessed in the Lord as I serve. Yes, I'm, I'm Willie Martin. I was first commissioned as a deacon in 2004 in Yucaipa, California at, at Good Shepherd Lutheran Church. And I'm currently serving at Grace Lutheran Church in Banning. What kinds of service do you do as deacons in the Lutheran Church? My primary ministry is a visitation ministry uh, sharing with shut-ins, those that are hospitalized or in a uh, convalescent or retirement home. On Sundays, I'm blessed to bring the uh, liturgy to the congregation, blessed to bring the prayer of the church, and however else I might be needed during the service that day. Currently, I have been uh, serving in a capacity of um, really a help to our pastor in times when he has many things going on. I will, I will preach and I will uh, visit the, the sick and uh, minister to those who are uh, homebound as well. Um, Previously, I've led Bible studies, been a part of the Board of Elders, uh, and various uh, positions in the uh, church um, leadership as well. Can you tell us what steps you went through uh, in order to become a deacon in the Lutheran Church? I went through the 10 mandatory courses to become a deacon, uh, went through a interview with a psychiatrist and I must admit that was one of the best interviews I ever had in my life and then I was tested by a um, director of lay leadership training a vice president of Pacific Southwest District and called to be deacon we also every year have to have our license renewed through the district and that requires the congregation to say, yes, we want these men to continue to serve in this manner, the pastor to give his official okie-dokie, because uh, again, he is who is the one who oversees what we do, and then uh, all the way up to the, the district president, um, all of which have the chance to say no. And so there are a lot of checks and balances for those of us who desire to serve in this, in this office. I'm impressed that in the church that's really in agreement about ministry. On the one hand, uh, the deacon, like you yourselves, really have certain gifts and desires for certain, certain kinds of ministry. And of course, the congregation has its needs. Um, so there seems to be a good partnership between the uh, office of the deacon and the congregation and the supervising pastor in establishing a kind of ministry that is uh, most beneficial in the setting that a deacon is in. Now, I often see being credentialed as a deacon as a sort of uh, way that open doors are made for ministry. Um, and uh, the position of deacon, I think, really does do that. It opens doors for ministry within the church and also outside the church. Now, what experiences have you had in having open doors for ministry inside and especially outside the church. I've been very blessed with the ministry that I spoke about with the shut-ins and that people do come to me and say, would you pray for me? Will you help me? Um, I'm in distress. I'm also a member of a uh, recovery group and that has allowed me to reach out as a deacon um, performing one funeral and being available for others that might be in need of prayer or direction. The congregation 
uh, sees the credentialing process as uh, something that, again, we're not just shooting from the hip with the things that we have to say, that we do have some training in this, and we do feel it as being a calling upon our uh, to, to serve in the, the way that we, that we do serve. I am in car repair and I am a hot rodder and I am able to speak, for lack of a better term, hot rod ease to those outside of the church who desperately need Jesus in their lives. As our society has gotten more and more secular, it seems that fewer people turn to the church for certain things like baptizing their children or for funerals or for weddings. Um, some deacons have reported that uh, people who would not come to the church for some of those uh, spiritual milestones will come to deacons they know because it seems as though even people outside the church at times recognize uh, the, the deacon as being a, a position of, you might say, respect or honor in that way. Uh, have you heard of or had any experiences in providing those kinds of services for people who wouldn't go to the church for those? Yes, I've, I've been blessed to have uh, a lot of experience in this. Again, with the hot rodding community and family members, uh, friends, again, who recognize the need uh, for uh, someone who has some training to uh, officiate at, at different things such as weddings and, and funerals. I have I have done baptisms as well. Uh, I found right at the first funeral that I was uh, officiating at, uh, the major thing that is such a blessing is that it's a wonderful place to share the gospel news. Uh, and it's, it's a blessing to me to have the people come up to me after the service and express their faith to me in a, in, a, in a way that they say, yes, we understand what you had to say, or there are times when people will say, I've never heard that before. Can you tell me more? And it opens doors. Uh, it, it, it has been something that has been, again, something that I have, well, I've officiated a number of funerals, and here in Southern California, and, uh, I hate to say it this way, but your dog can marry you if you get a, a license to do it. It's, anybody could do that. And why not have someone who can present the gospel in this, in this manner at weddings? I have had to turn down uh, three weddings where uh, they did not want the gospel message presented. And I said, well, it's great that you're being married. I think that's a good thing. Uh, but you got the wrong guy if you don't want a Christian, a Christ, Christian wedding. And it's, it's an, an opportunity again to uh, take a stand for Christ. Uh, one couple came to me and asked if I would marry them. And those folk not being vested in the Lord, I had to direct them to another avenue. Do you see your position of deacon as being similar to another church office, for instance, a president or secretary? Or do you see your position of deacon as being more like a biblical calling? I definitely see this as a biblical calling, not an elected office, and was commissioned in 2007 and felt the call then, and I feel, still feel the call today. Yes, I certainly see it as a call, uh, not just as something temporal within the congregation, but spiritual, where we are able to, as deacons, uh, help support the pastor in whichever way he uh, is in need of support, uh, such as uh, bringing, like bringing to mind uh, those who are having some difficulties that the pastor may not have have seen. Uh, there are times I have found where those in the congregation might just want to speak to the deacon as opposed to speaking uh, with the pastor 
uh, for whatever reason that might be. Uh, and we are able, again, to um, not supplant the pastor. I want to make that real clear. We're not out to do that. We're there in support of the pastor. Two books of the Bible talk about the office of deacon in the New Testament. First Timothy 3 and Philippians 1 both mention it. Um, Timothy gives a list of qualifications for a deacon that is very similar to that of a, a bishop or an elder, primarily spiritual nature and character rather than skills. Now, as I've investigated this, uh, I've seen that almost every denomination has a deacon-like office, although they may go by different titles and have little different responsibilities. But do you believe that the biblical office of deacon exists in the church today? Yes, I most certainly see it as being something that is alive at least in the uh, district in which we serve here at the Pacific Southwest District of the Missouri Synod Lutheran Church, Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, uh, because of the need of the congregations. Now, the standpoint of our district is that the um, particular ministry of a particular deacon varies with the location. Uh, the deacon's own gifts and the needs of the congregation and uh, the overseeing pastor all have something to say about that. Along those lines, the stance of our district is that deacons are able to preach and have that credential, but it's up to the particular deacon and the congregation and the supervising pastor to see if a particular deacon will preach in his particular location. Uh, is preaching part of your ministry and your congregations? Yes, it is. Able to preach sometimes three, four, five times a year in pastor's absence. All the messages and that I have approved through pastor working directly under him, and they have all been well received by the congregation. Sermons aren't just off the cuff. There is a lot of pre preparation that has gone into the sermon. Now, the call of a pastor really has three parts. It takes some education and some examination by uh, leaders in the church. It also requires a call by a congregation and then an installation or ordination from our church body. Uh, did your call uh, to be deacon follow a similar kind of format? Yes, it was. Um, I'm blessed in the call that the congregation gave me. I was in commissioned in 2007 and I highly respect that call from my own congregation and at the same time I had friends and loved ones there that were not members of the church, uh, co-workers and many people from other churches in our circuit came the time I was commissioned. What a, what a blessing it is for how the congregation has received me as a deacon and uh, their uh, outpouring of love is just tremendous. And yes, I have been blessed to be able to uh, fill in for other pastors uh, within our circuit and other circuits as well, uh, and all within uh, the blessing of my supervising pastor who, who feels very strongly about this, feels that the, uh, the deacons are a, uh, a blessing to his, to his ministry. Now both of you have talked about how receptive that your congregations and the people have been to your ministry. Um, how do you think uh, pastors have responded to your ministry? All the pastors that I know, uh, not only in our circuit but also through our district, um, have been encouraging have been very positive and I feel a positive call just through that. Some pastors are uh, receptive to it right from the get-go, uh, realizing uh, the help that can be provided by utilizing deacons. And I have to go along with the fact that uh, I, those who may not be very receptive just may not understand uh, what the, the office of deacon 
can bring to his congregation. Uh, and again, with, to be utilized in a manner in which the congregation determines. Are there any hindrances you found towards doing ministry in your locations? In, in the, my current congregation, there has the only hindrance that I could have, I can see is time. Uh, there are limitations to what I can do, working a full-time job, as as well as serving as a deacon. Uh, there are things that I would. In, in years past, I have led a Saturday morning men's Bible study that was not only a blessing to the men, but to myself. Uh, and I would love to be able to do that again. It's just, I, there's only so much that I can do now. Now, I've been training deacons for some 17 years, and so I've been able to follow the ministry of men like yourselves over a long period of time. It almost seems as though the ministry of a deacon often lasts longer in a particular congregation than the ministry of the pastor. <laughs> so I know that both of you have experienced a uh, time in your church in which uh, there was no pastor. Uh, how did the deacon ministry help fill that void? The pastor took a different call and for a brief period of time I filled in, uh, in, in a position to preach and to minister to the congregation and it was it was well received because I had worked hand in hand uh, with the pastor previous to this. To me one of the most exciting things about the ministry of deacons is that it seems to enlarge the ministry in individual congregations and in the district, the church at large. Have you seen that in your own life, in your congregation, and beyond that as well? The ability to have people look at you as, as someone who has had this training, who recognizes your spirituality and your love for Christ and what you do, and being able to articulate that in a manner in which they understand. Well, I've known both of you for quite a while, and I would have to say that I've heard things about you oh. and about your ministry, and they've all been good. You know, uh, you've been a blessing to the church. Uh, both of you have had uh, a strong desire to serve the Lord and to serve your congregations, and your congregations have really benefited from that. And I have to say that in the 17 years I've been training deacons, I've seen that across our whole region, uh, that deacons have stepped up to serve in their congregations in all different kinds of settings, in very large churches that needed uh, help because the ministry was too large for a pastor to do, in very small congregations, uh, in remote congregations, uh, and that your ministries have changed as the needs of your congregations have changed. So it's been a blessing to me to see your ministries in action and those of your brother deacons. And it's been a blessing to me to see the response of the church and of your pastors as well, uh, because they've certainly seen God at work uh, in your work. I would like to thank those who had the foresight to begin the lay leadership training program within the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. And I would like to encourage those that are in leadership now to continue with the program. I also encourage you to join in the lay leadership training program. It will be a wonderful blessing for you. In the last 20 years, I've been pleased to see how the ministry of deacons in Luther Church has really grown and prospered. It's brought great benefits to many people both inside and outside the church. And these men who've been called as deacons certainly have found greater maturity in themselves and also effectiveness in ministry. And I look forward to see how God will continue to cause blessing and fruit to come from the ministry of deacons in the Lutheran Church for many years and decades and perhaps even centuries to come. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, God bless you. <laughs>